Hey, what's going on guys? This is your boy C. Will back to you with another video. Um, I'm excited. Um, if you saw the title of this video, um, we're doing something different this time. It's been a minute since I made any changes to my streaming slash recording PC. Um, so, and this is a great upgrade because um, the last PC that I was using had a uh, 5800X um, 8 core 16 thread CPU in it. It's a very famous CPU on my channel. <laughs> you see me do, uh, you know, undervolting and curve optimizing all that different type of good stuff with that CPU. Great CPU. Um, and also included in that CPU that um, also included in that PC that I was using was the Asus Rock Strix 3080 Ti. Beast of a graphics card. Um, and so in that PC, um, it's actually going to my oldest daughter uh, for college. And so, yeah. Now it's time, you know, I've been collecting parts for a little while now. If you're uh, familiar, this is the Ryzen 9 7950X. You know, I had gotten this a while back. It's, it's definitely been a while now. Uh, so it's been sitting in a box waiting <laughs> for me to, uh, to put it into something. Yeah, so we're going to use the 7950X. This is 16 cores, uh, 32 threads. Um, this is um, going to pretty much handle everything you know if i decide to do some video editing um you know maybe have this transcode some video do some other things on the side this is going to be able to do it um also you know when you're talking about recording and streaming at the same time um this will definitely be able to take care of that along with the asus pro art uh 4070 ti just picked this up from micro center um this has probably been one of the reasons why i haven't been able to do uh, my bill yet because i had to get another graphics card um, got this open box for a really good deal. And uh, yeah, um, all the links will be down in the description below um, if you decide that you want to pick up some of these parts. So um, what's great about this GPU is it has the um, the brand new encoders, um, AV1. Um, of course, you know, Envy is um, included with that. Um, but this is has the actual dual encoder. So when it comes to doing any type of video production work and all that different type of stuff. Um, this is going to be able to handle it. Um, this has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, I will be testing out some gaming on this PC, but it's not going to be for gaming. Um, I have the Trident Z. Um, this is DDR5 6000 CL30. Um, had this kit laying around for a while um, as well. Um, now this right here, the CPU cooler. So this is going to cool the 7950X. I know it's an air cooler. Yep. It's been a while since I actually used the air cooler. Um, all of my, you know, bills have had, um, all in one AIO liquid coolers in them. But this right here, um, has been very hard to pick up from micro center. It's been selling out. Usually it goes out of stock very fast. Um, but, um, this is, uh, one of the best CPU coolers outside of Noctua. <laughs> um, and this actually gives Noctua a run for his money. Um, super silent, uh, can handle, uh, this beast can also handle um, a lot of the Intel CPUs. Um, but yeah, everybody knows this thing gets up to 95 degrees, um, you know, when you're maxing it out. And so, yeah, also just picked this up. Um, this was actually on sale at Micro Center for 60 bucks. Um, one terabyte. NVMe Gen 4 gets up to 7300 uh, mega. Is that megabits? I think it's megabits. Um, and then uh, on the read speed, 6100 um, megabits on the write speed. Uh, yeah. So, and we have the trusty but good old faithful X670 Ors Elite. Um, this, I've been, you know, throwing this board around. Um, I was using this board in my AMD system. Um, before I upgraded to the uh, the X670 E Gene that's in the 7800X uh, 3D. So I originally actually bought these two together. Um, and so, yep, we're putting them back to use. Um, this is a pretty decent board. Um, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles when it comes to um, like overclocking and uh, stuff like that. But, you know, we're just going to be using this. Uh, one for the USB ports. Um, and also it can handle this. Um, CPU very well in uh, streaming and recording. That's what it's going to be about. Um, I'm also have, so I just have stuff everywhere. So I also have the Elgato 4K60 Pro. 
Um, this is not the newest version. Um, this is the Mark II. This came out before the new release um, that they have out now, but it's cool. Um, you know, Elgato, if you want to send me, uh, you know, the newest one, uh, preferably um, your USB version, <laughs> the 4KX, um, you know, the 120 hertz, you know, you know, being able to record 120 hertz, 120 FPS, phenomenal. Anyways, um, I'll be using this for um, the actual capturing of the PCs, um, for game capture, and also using this. This is a USB capture card, HD60S Plus. Um, will be, I've been actually using this um, for my Canon M50. Um, and believe it or not, you can actually be able to, the Canon M50 is really not made for live streaming, but through a little tips and tricks, um, you can actually be able to, you know, use this with and get clean HDMI out. Um, the only downside to using this particular one, um, this particular camera is that with the clean HDMI, you can only do manual focus. Uh, but if you're going to be sitting in the same spot for the whole time, um, you know, you don't have to worry about the autofocus. You can use manual focus and get clean HDMI out. 1080p, uh, this, you know, still rocks. It still, it works. It looks good. I also forgot to mention, um, shout out to C-Sonic uh, for uh, sponsoring the actual PSU um, in this build power supply. This is the GX850. Uh, phenomenal. It comes with um, it's ATX 3.0 and PCIe 5.0 compliant. Um, and so it comes with the 12VH power connector that's needed uh, for this. So I don't have to use the actual adapter in here. So that's going to be awesome. Um, and so, yeah, that's the streaming bit. So let's go ahead and get this put together. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, uh, let's, and this thing is, this box is huge, by the way, uh, but the cooler is also big. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, we're also, um, I'll pull it out a little bit later, uh, but the case that we're using is the Fractal North. Um, it's the black with the bamboo wood on the front. Uh, phenomenal looking case, but it's going to go good with the actual Asus ProArt card. Uh, which is blacked out. Can't wait to show you that a little bit later. All right, so we're going to take the motherboard out. And of course, you know, I keep all my boxes. I keep everything nice and tidy. And uh, here's the actual motherboard here. Hopefully we don't run into issues with this heat sink. Um, it's kind of big. Um, there are some... Uh, changes and stuff that you could be able to do to the actual um, cooler, but hopefully um, I don't run into any issues. Um, I read online that the actual cooler was compatible with this board, um, so hopefully we don't run into any problems, but we'll definitely see. Uh, but this is the Elite X. This is a blacked out board. Uh, the thing I like about this one, it doesn't have any RGB. Um, because I'm not worried about RGB on this particular bill. Okay, so first things first, uh, let's go ahead and get the CPU. Um, if you've seen, I did a bill, I think I did. Now that I think about it, I don't know if I actually did a bill on camera with the 7950X. If I did, let me know down in the comments below. <laughs> you could go back through my videos and check it out. Um, but, If you see me do the build with the 7800H3D, you know these CPUs look like this. I actually clean it up very well. All that power in this CPU. So if you see that, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, lift this lever here, open that up, and then of course you got the pins. There's an arrow here. You matched it up. There's also an arrow there. And uh, just drop that into the socket. Wiggle it just a little bit. Then what you could do, you can close that off and that plastic piece is going to pop off. Boom, just like that. You know, so make sure that you keep this um, covers up your actual socket for your CPU. Just in case if you need to arm it aboard. Um, so I'll put that back inside the box a little bit later. Um, again, we have the, this, let me tell you something about G-Scale RAM. This RAM has been good to me. Um, and when I say it's been good to me, um, I have a kit. Um, I, I think both of these I've been able to overclock to 6,400. So the seal 36,000 mega transfers. Um, I'm not going to overclock this kit um, 
in here because I don't need to. So I'm going to leave it at the, you know, the, uh, the expo settings for uh, 6,000 speed. But it, with my 7800X3D, I have the same kit. Um, and I have that overclocked and tuned. I will tune this round though, uh, using Billzoid settings, um, bio settings. But I am going to, um, in my 7800X3D build, I do have it overclocked to 6400 mega uh, transfers uh, per second. And uh, that system flies. So, and then in my Intel build, um, I recently purchased some 7200 mega transfer uh, RAM. Um, Team Group T Create. Uh, that RAM is phenomenal. It's 48 gigabytes. This kit right here is 32 gigabytes. Um, that's all I need. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna need anything else for what I'll be doing with this build. But you know, we'll see. But I don't think I need to upgrade that RAM, this RAM, um, anytime soon. So we had the CPU installed. We got the RAM installed. Next thing up is the NVMe. So this right here, I was looking for a real cheap drive. I'm not going to lie. Um, I didn't, I've been buying NVMe's in like the last couple of drives I bought. They're like expensive. I just need to get something that's really fast. It's good for being able to just, you know, record to and stuff like that. Um, and this works out. So this is Inland, uh, which is uh, generally it's a brand that's, that Micro Center that kind of carries the store brand. Uh, but the TN470, I was told it was pretty good. 3D um, TLC Gen 4. Uh, so yeah, um, I think this is this is going to work out just fine. Got it. So on here, it only has the actual chips on the front, nothing on the back. Uh, so it's not double-sided, but you know, keep this Sometimes this is used as a heat spreader, so you keep this on here. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much simple. I am going to, where's my screwdriver? Going to use the top slot for this. And as you can see, it already has the actual thermal pad on here. Um, and it's just going to go for the top. And on the Gigabyte board, and I don't know if I could zoom in, let's see. So on the Gigabyte board, this actually has a latch system. Um, so what's great about this is that you don't need a screw. You just place this in, wiggle that, and then boom, that latches down and, you, and you're good. And now I'm going to tell you what doesn't really make sense is that you still need to unscrew this <laughs> just to get this off. But you have the latch system here. Does it, it, it's kind of backwards. You know, the whole thing about the latch system is that not having to unscrew anything. But anyway. Uh, that's neither here nor there. So we got the motherboard together. So again, we're only using one M.2 drive, MEME. We got the CPU installed. Um, we have the RAM installed. Make sure that you use A2, B2. Okay, here is the, the cooler. So let's take a look, see what we have. Like I said, this is my first time using the Deep Cool Assassin 4. Um, I haven't used a cooler this big in any of my bills, even back to my first bill. Um, it was always an AIO, uh, you know, all in one, you know, 360 millimeters, 280s. I think I used the 240 before, but, um, the only air cooler that I actually used was, uh, the Cooler Master, uh, the small joint. I forgot the name of it. Um, that was, you know, I had that cooler in my last, uh, streaming bill and, uh, it did its job, but this one is a big one. This is a high performance cooler. Uh, again, I got it because you need <laughs> something good for the 7950X to keep it cool. So, but I also wanted something that wasn't going to be screaming loud all the time. Um, and I didn't want to deal with a, you know, the cost of a, this is, speaking of cost, this is only $84.99. Um, and it cools just like your top AIOs. Um, so yeah, 
you know, when you're talking about price, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on this build. Like I said, a lot of these parts I already had. I already had the motherboard. I had the CPU. I had the RAM. Um, the only thing that I recently purchased was the cooler, the uh, M.2, and the case. That was it. Like everything else I already had. CSonic gave me the, um, the power supply. And so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was just trying to do as little as possible when it came to uh, the amount of money that I was um, spending on this bill. Save your money. Um, and get open box whenever you can. The only thing that I wouldn't suggest purchasing open box um, is motherboard. Now, even though I, I, I my uh, X670E gene board, I got that open box. But that was because the prices was ridiculous and it was a really good deal. But I really, when it comes to motherboards, is like the one thing where I do not, oh yeah, and um, you know, like hard drives, NVMEs, SSDs, get those new. Motherboards, NVMEs, get those new. Uh, coolers, get them new. Um, but like RAM, CPU, graphics cards, you get those open box. Yeah, RAM, CPU, graphics cards, you get those open box. Man, this thing is huge. And the reason why I say you can get those open box because I, I haven't ran into any issues with CPUs, open box, RAM open box. Um, I think both of my kits of G-Skill were open box when I bought them. I got them for really good deals. Um, but yeah, and I purchased many open box GPUs. Um, so the, the Asus Pro Art card that I have, open box. Card looks great. You know, you have, you know, with buying locally at Micro Center, I don't have to worry about trying to mail something back and all this. You know, if it doesn't work within the next 15 days, I take it back. Um, this thing right here is beautiful, by the way. who how many heat pipes do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven heat pipes. Yes, sir. Okay, so let me tell you something. Look at this. This is phenomenal. Uh, and this is actually the back fan, believe it or not. All right, so it actually sits like this. And then you have a switch uh, for... Um, I think for performance and let me see if you can see that there. So there's a switch for performance and quiet. Um, yeah, and I like how they did the grill and stuff here. Uh, this is pretty, but this is pretty dope. This uh, I think like the height of this is only 165 millimeters. So uh, we're not going to have any issues with the Pro Art. Not the Pro Art. We're not going to have any issues with the Fractal North case. Uh, but I just want to do a a size test with this board what's great about this because this is how it goes um you don't have to worry about ram clearance because it doesn't sit on ram all right so let me tell you how crazy this fits perfect is this is it's sitting exactly on top of the cpu okay look at this look how much clearance we have and so yeah fits perfect what's great about this uh, cooler is that you don't have to worry about um, the RAM clearance that you normally have to when you're dealing with CPU coolers. Um, and yeah, this thing is phenomenal. So it just clears, even with this beefy heat sink, it clears it. So I don't have to worry about making an adjustment. But this part is adjustable. I think it kind of moves up um, if you need it to. Um, but yeah, no, we're good to go. What's in the box? Let's see what comes in the box. All right, so we have the, they give you the screwdriver. They give you paste. Uh, looks like a DM9, but we're actually going to use some cryo knot paste. Uh, let's see. And we have the screws, brackets, standoff. So um, this comes with Intel and AMD brackets. You have to figure that part out. Uh, looks like it also comes with a, and I think this is a fan adapter bracket to add on another fan, I believe. Uh, oh, pads to clean off and a spatula for the uh, thermal paste. And so, yeah. So, let's figure out. So, this is what we're going to be using. This stuff is expensive, but it's phenomenal. Cryonite Extreme 
Um, so I bought this uh, for my last PC build. Well, no, when I switched out my motherboard. I bought another one of these and then kind of found out I didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, I was upset. And so I, I told myself, I was like, man, I just wasted $25. But then I didn't because I'm using it again. So, great. So let me figure out what we need and I'll come back. Okay, so after looking at the instructions, looks like, all right, this bag here has, it's going to look like this. It's going to have these brackets. On this bracket, you will see, it'll say CPU, um, but also on here, you'll see a C and a D. Um, we're going to use the D uh, with the actual uh, standoffs uh, when we screw those on to the motherboard, uh, to the motherboard bracket. So we're going to use D. Um, it's going to stick out like that away from the CPU socket. So as long as we use D as in David um, for those on each side, we'll be good to go. Um, and then once uh, we, we get these brackets on, this particular bag is inside the actual Intel um, bracket bag for some reason. Anyways, and these is what we'll use to actually screw down um, the actual brackets. So, so I already took off the actual brackets that were previously on here. Um, it has four screws and it's like, it comes with the motherboard. Um, so I took those off. You have to take those off. I already had them off because I previously used this board before. And there is a bracket on the back of this motherboard. Okay, but we're gonna make sure that these are in the D, you know, the D section. So you got C and D. Um, so when we put these on, it's gonna look like that. And um, when we get ready to tighten these up, let's make sure it's on D. And uh, this one is gonna face away from the CPU socket. So, and we're gonna use these right here, along with the screwdriver that they gave us uh, to screw these brackets down. So I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna hand tighten first to make sure it doesn't move. Like I said, I'm gonna hand tighten these first and also make sure that you have the, uh, the Phillips head side on top. Um, so you, you can actually be able to screw it down. Boom. All right, so that's done. So next thing we need to do is actually, got to put the thermal paste on. So we'll go ahead and get that out the way. Now, if you've seen any of my previous bills, you know that uh, I do an X. <laughs> and uh, don't make fun of my X. And again, this is ooh, Cryo Not Extreme. So I know it looks like a lot of thermal paste, but trust me, you're fine. What we need to do is actually prepare the CPU cooler. So a couple of things we need to do here. One, um, we need to unhook these. Um, and then this plate needs to come off. And I'm, I'm actually doing this a little bit different from the actual instructions. And the reason why is because <laughs> in the instructions, it has you already placing the actual cooler on top and screwing it down before you do any of this and it doesn't make sense to me um so do what makes sense to you i'm going to get all this out the way first i'm going to pull this out which is the fan and as you can see here that's what it looks like uh, 140 millimeter fan i believe now this is what the inside looks like so when we get ready to start screwing these down it's going to go like that and you're going to screw it. Oh, this is magnetic. I just realized that. Anyways, you're going to screw each side until, you know, uh, it completes itself. And then you got to put this fan back in and you got to uh, funnel this back through before you can plug it into the motherboard. Um, just make sure that you take this off. Cold plate. And the goal is to actually sit this down and hopefully we don't have to move it again. <laughs> It's probably good to get your fingers to press down on it. I think I got it now though. I think I got both sides threaded. So, and then, you know, you keep twisting and turning until they stop. 
but make sure you go back and forth. See, this is why I say this is not, it's not the hardest part, but it's the, it's the tedious. It's very tedious. Yeah. So I am going to stop there. And uh, as you can see, boom, it's on there. What we need to do is actually place the other fan back in. And we're going to make sure that we funnel the cable through. And pull it out on the other side. Slide that back in. Snaps in. We go go ahead and put the actual grill back on. Take a look. I think it snaps back on. It's like it's magnetic. Also, the little switch here, um, the one to the right, which is default. Um, it has like four squares. That's performance. The one that's to the left it has like two squares. That's quiet mode. We're going to leave this on performance because of the type of chip that we have. Um, and then we're going to hook these back up. So these are four pin connectors back to the splitter. All right. So that's the final product in terms of, you know, this part anyway. Let's get the case ready. Okay, this is the Fractal North. Look at this case. Absolutely phenomenal. This is real wood. I just want y'all to know that. This is real wood. Look at this. Power button, uh, headphone, mic, USB 3.0. Then we got Type C. I think up at the top you could fit two. 40, maybe 280, but I think 240 from what I was told. Um, and then on a, you got, it comes with 240 millimeter fans for intake. And uh, yeah, we got the grill right. It's so much air, you know, airflow passage, you know, that's going on here. And then, yep, we got the GPL. This is fun. Look, the leather to take the top off. Phenomenal. Man, let's go ahead and get this motherboard in this thing. <laughs> There's a, a box that has all the screws in it. Does this come off? Oh, it does. And look at that. On the inside, we have a dust filter. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, it would. 140 millimeter fans. And then the accessory box. It has a uh, twist tie on it. Take that out. User guide came in the box, got the screws. I just want to make sure I got the screws. So the top also slides off. Um, now in this particular deal, I did not get fans to go at the top. I want to see, I was, again, I was trying to do this as minimal as possible. Um, I'm going to see what the thermals are going to be like with the two 140s on the front pulling in air and uh, one 120 on the back for exhaust, um, you know, along with the actual CPU cooler that's going to be pulling air through. Um, but I'm not going to put anything at the top just yet, see what the temps are for the CPU and the GPU. Um, and if need be, I can add some uh, fans at the top, you know, later if I feel like um, there's a need for that. All right, so looking at this down here, there's two hard drive cages. Um, that we're not going to use. Um, you have all of your connectors. You got the HD audio, uh, USB 3.0, USB C. Um, there's also some fan connectors. Then we had a front panel connectors. And then, yep, so just your standard stuff. We have some cable management with the ties going on here. Uh, we have rubber grommets. We have some tie points here as well. So not a lot with this build. You also have uh, 2.5 inch uh, drives could go here, two of them. Um, there's a lot of tie points though. Um, so this is pretty cool. Got your cutout for the motherboard and also some more tie points here. Um, so I tell you what, let's put the motherboard in and then we can put the power supply in. I'm not for sure if I have enough room right here. I may have to take out these hard drive cables, well, at least one. 
Uh, I'm not going to use them anyway, but and I may just go ahead and take them out just to get them out of the way. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and put the motherboard in. All right, so the standoffs are already here for ATX. All right, so this thing is like crazy heavy. And I don't want to drop it. But it looks like it's right on the money. Boom. We're good to go with that. And let's go ahead and screw the motherboard in, at least on the box. Uh, and then there's eight mounting screws of this kind, which is... Which are these? These are probably the motherboard. Let's count. Let's count the screw holes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are your motherboard screws. It's the only screws I'll be using out of this pack. And we got the iFixit screwdriver, magnetic. Makes things easy, but this is the reason why you want to get this put in outside of the case because uh, this is not a big case, but all that stuff that we were doing, you definitely don't want to be trying to do that while you're inside the case because it gets a little cramped in here. We got the motherboard in. All right, so we got that backed up a little bit, but as you can see, this thing is huge. That's what that looks like when you have a huge CPU cooler uh, that sits, you know, it pretty much, it kind of takes up everything. It's the star of the show almost. Okay, um, so I was able to get some wiring stuff done. I put the 120 millimeter fan on the back here and I'll show you some of the uh, cables and the plugs in the front panel. I already got that taken care of. Um, we just need to do the power supply. And uh, shout out to C-Sonic for supplying the power supply on this build. It's a GX850 um, ATX 3.0 PCIe 5.0 compliant. Um, these power supplies come with a 10-year warranty. I've been using these power supplies my last three or four builds um, and uh, never had an issue. So let's take a look here. Um, I don't need a whole lot. Um out of this box so i'm just going to go over the things that we need this is fully modular um, and it also comes with the 12 vh power uh, connector for the 4070 ti uh, that we're going to be using today so once um, i get this installed run the wires cpu cables um, and then we'll install the graphics card and the capture card um, so um, we have the zip ties and stuff here don't know if we're going to need these today like i said i'm not using too many Cables, this is a real simple build. Uh, so I will need these, uh, the actual screws uh, for the power supply. Set that to the side. And then, um, let's see, we got the cable. So we got the power cable here. Uh, definitely gonna need that. And then this goodie bag, we have all the cables. And the thing that I like about this GX series and also the Vertex series, which is also GX, um, they all, the cables look phenomenal. So let me show you. They're all um, like the single stranded kind of, you know, braided type, which makes it easy uh, when you're running the cables and doing cable management, but they also look great as well. And so that's the thing, you know, with these looking great, gives you that aesthetic that you need for your deal. And what's great about this case and the um, graphics card that we're using, it, it has that aesthetic, okay? So uh, we have the 24 pin cable here uh, for the motherboard. So we're definitely gonna use that. Uh, PCIe so it also comes with I think it's three uh, PCIe uh, cables but we're not going to use those today we don't need them and we have the 12 VH power as you can see covers up to 600 watts 
Um, and yeah, we're going to be using this uh, for the graphics card. Uh, let's see. And the only other cables that we need are CPU. So we need two 8 pin for the CPU. Uh, you know, we're running that 16 core 32 thread. And, uh, and I think that's it. All right. So we only need four cables. How about that? Um, again, minimum bill. And now we're going to take a look at the power supply. And this beauty right here is the power supply itself. Um, it's definitely compact. And as you can see here, modular. You have everything that plugs in. Uh, but yeah, this is a gold rated. Um, I did a video about power supplies. Why well, I bet you can see that video on the channel. Um, I'll maybe try to put that in the description uh, below. But definitely uh, just make sure that you go with the great power supply company and someone that has a great warranty on their products. C-Sonic, you know, they're definitely one of the top brands that's out there. Okay, so on the back of the case here, uh, we actually need to take these off um, because this is the only way and the power supply is going to slide in uh, backwards like this. But we we'll have to attach this bracket onto the power supply first. Um, and then we can slide it in because this is kind of a compact case and you can't slide it in from the side, you know, like, you know, most cases um, allow you to. Um, so brackets are pretty cool. Um, I think this is the first case where I actually had to attach a bracket to the power supply. Uh, so before we do this, I am going to go ahead and plug in the cables. So when I put in the power supply, um, I don't have to try to worry about trying to plug those in after the fact. And these cables are super manageable. So the only thing we have to do here is install the four screws onto the bracket. And boom, that fits in just like that. Should be good to go. Boom. Power supply is in. All right, so as you can see here, um, so I have all the rest of the cables plugged in. Uh, front panel, USB-C, USB-3, trying to give me a hard time. All right, so that's plugged in. This is gonna be for the GPU. So CPU cables. So sometimes these could be a little tricky <laughs> um, for the CPU. What I hate about these sometimes is that when you place these in, they're not flipped the right way. So sometimes you got to come in here and you got to flip it like that. All right. So I got the CPU connectors in up at the top there. So I think it'll be easier. Put in the capture card real quick go ahead and get that out the way so this is going to go in the bottom PCIe slot and this is the Elgato 4k60 Pro Mark II okay last but not least um, we got got everything done um, so now we just have to put in the graphics card so this is the Asus ProArt Whew. Uh, 4070 Ti, I got this open box from Micro Center. And uh, yeah, let's, so I can't really do an unboxing because it's already been unboxed, but uh, this is our first time uh, unboxing on this channel. And if you know me, I have an infatuation with uh, graphics cards. <laughs> I got a 4090, a 7900 XTX, and I just got rid of my beloved uh, Asus Rod Strix 3080 Ti. Uh, well, I, I didn't get rid of it. Uh, gave it to my daughter. So, and uh, yeah. So inside the box, let me see if I can. So inside the box, uh, we have cards. Um, you know, just a bunch of. I don't know why they do this type of stuff, but anyways. Um, we had all this different type of stuff. Cool. I, I'll do that last. Here we have the uh, the Pro Art, um, and this is a. Well, I just drew a blank. <laughs> it's an anti-site bracket uh, for the graphics card, so that's pretty dope. 
Um, and then also in the box, they do include an adapter. So this is 12 VH power adapter. So it goes from 12 VH, 12 pins to two eight pins, but we don't need this because we have a dedicated um, cable for that. And then, is that it? All right, so that's it for that. And to be honest with you, this is a light card. It's two slots, it's very light. So it's not heavy like most of the cars that I normally have. Like the 4090 Founders Edition is a brick. That thing is heavy. The 7900 HTX is a brick. That thing is heavy. The 3080 Ti was definitely heavier than this, but this is a beautiful car. Look at that. Got to be more careful. You know what I mean? Look at that. Ooh, so this is open box. And uh, this only comes with one HDMI 2.1. And then three display port, I think they're 1.4A. Um, but that's, you know, that's fine. And then, of course, the 12 VH power connector here. Three fans, but look at the colors. And as you can see, these colors match this actual case. Uh, so that's phenomenal. Uh, so yeah, they go hand in hand. Um, I may pick up a, um, well, with this CPU cooler, I may not be able to do a vertical bracket. Oh, and plus I can't do a vertical bracket vertical bracket because of the uh uh the capture card but this would be beautiful uh in a vertical mount you think yeah so let's get this installed in the case and this is the last thing that we need to do so and it's not a long i don't know exactly how long this card is i'll when i edit the video i'll put it up um on the screen um, but this fits perfectly and you know, we shouldn't have any issues, but let's go ahead and lock this in. And to be honest with you, I don't think we will need the anti-sag bracket. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you actually want me to install that. How's this build looking so far? Let me know down in the comments right now what you think. Now, I actually want to put some fans up at the top, just looking at this, but I don't think it needs it. The two 140s on the front is going to pull, hot air is going to come out in the back. I mean, this is, and, and these cars, I forgot the wattage on these cars um, on the 47 Ti, but it's low. Like the 40 series is just low. It's not going to use a whole lot of power, especially for what I'm going to be using it for. I heard it snap in. I heard it. Okay. Let me know what you think. We have a complete bill. Um, now we just need to pop back on the actual sides, the back, and uh, put the front of the case on and turn this thing on for the first time. Okay, we got the final product here. And uh, yeah, this thing is looking good. Very well pieced together. That graphics card looks amazing. The cooler, now look at this. Got a perforated top. Yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh. And then look at this. Got wood? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. And as you can see, this bill came out super nice. Now it's time to see if we could be, if we could boot for the first time. Let's, let's, let's take a look. Okay, let's see if she boots. Got it hooked up to my OLED monitor. And we have lights. Got a light here, light on the rim, light on the motherboard. Fan spinning. Both of the front fans are spinning. We got a light on the capture card. Okay, we got action on the screen. We have action. Uh, let me see what this is. Oh yeah, we got boot. Yes siree. Let's go baby. All right, so press yes to reset FTPM. Uh, press Y 
Um, I also need to update the BIOS. They have a new BIOS out for Gigabyte now. So that'll probably be the first thing that I'll do before I start making any changes inside the BIOS. So, uh, cause yeah, this is the old, I haven't, we have boots. All right. So I know I got this configured like very weirdly and, uh, I'm going to enable expo. And then really that's it. Uh, that's the only thing I'm going to do. Hit F10, press yes. Okay. Well, boot. I like the minimalistic, um, this is the only thing that we have RGB in here is RAM. Okay, we have boot. Hey, let's check out this B-roll.
Okay, guys, man, let me know what you think uh, down in the comments below um, about that gameplay. I know you saw it in the menu settings. Yeah, uh, I made a slight change to the build. Uh, I love the way that the Pro Art card looks, but I was, you know, I got that card open box, but I saw something else pop up at Micro Center, and it was the 4070 Ti Super. Um, if you don't know this one instead of 12 gigabytes, this one comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM It's actually um, kind of find out it's a different chip that's on the inside um, As well, so on the 4070 Ti that was an 8104 I believe and this is actually 8103 which is a similar chip set to the 4080 um, And yeah, so this is a slight upgrade, but look at this price open box micro center 719 and I got the uh, the 4070 Ti Pro Art was 773, so this actually came out cheaper. Um, and so, yeah, I'm actually going to do a full review on this card. It's going to be coming up soon. Um, but yeah, as you just saw, um, I'm editing. I'm trying to finish up this video <laughs> so I can put it up on the channel that you're going to that you're watching right now. Um, but we were playing in 4K at quality render scale, um, and yeah, we was getting 100 FPS. So yeah. Let me know what you think. Man, I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.